Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. There goes our buddy Corey, hanging out in Seattle, United States. We're checking out the Rad Rhino. That's this thing, and it's built around the Rad Rover, which is one of the most popular bikes from Rad Power Bikes. You guys have been around since, what, 2007? Yeah, correct, yeah. That's awesome. And the, the Rad Rover was introduced 2015? Yeah, so the Rad Rover's 2015. The Rad Rhino we launched a couple years ago uh, nice. when we launched our European uh, rollout. Uh, so, yeah, our office is now in uh, Utrecht, which is 20 or 30 minutes from uh, Amsterdam, which Amsterdam. more people are maybe familiar with, but they should come by uh, Utrecht. It's just a, it's a beautiful city, great place to bike, and you can come by and take one of these for a spin. Be fun to check it out, because the the model for these guys has been sort of online, direct to consumer in the United States. And in Europe, I think you ship for free through a lot of locations, right? Yeah, we do. And, and shipping's maybe even faster than it is in the U.S. because of the direct, uh, the, the proximity of Rotterdam and, and, so, and the way shipments move cool. throughout Europe. So Okay. And then pricing. That's The reason I'm explaining this is just to try to give you some idea of the history, a little bit of the company, and also to set your expectations. You know, if you get this, it's going to come in a really big box, but be fairly easy to set up. It's really nice if you can go and actually check out one of the service centers and, and you know, get this thing, get, you know, hop on it. It only comes in one frame size, but you'll notice that the top tube is sloped down quite a bit. It comes with a 350 millimeter seat post, so it's fairly adjustable. And they've set this up with a shorter stem. Can you see that? It's, it's fairly short with these mid-rise bars. So the bars can be tilted forward or back to adjust reach, but otherwise it's a very upright, very comfortable position with these stitched faux leather ergonomic grips, Velo plush saddle, has a little handle on it so you can pick the bike up and move it around a little bit. It is a heavier bike, so it's about 74.5 pounds. You know, that's, that's on the heavier side, but part of that's because it's got this rack that it comes with pretty heavy duty. It's got the bungee loop down here so you can strap something onto it. A Yep compatible window right here. And then they have a whole line of accessories, some of which are on the European Rad Wagon. So this is the other e-bike that Rad Power Bikes has brought into Europe. And it's got some of these waterproof panniers. I love that they're reflective. I love that the, you know, again, the Yep, the Yep seat fits onto this one. If you got this, they have something called the caboose. It's like a a bar that surrounds it and keeps the fingers from getting pinched and stuff. So I've reviewed that separately, definitely worth checking out. It has all the same sort of legal characteristics for Europe, for the European market. The top speed is 25 kilometers per hour, about 15.5 miles per hour. And the lights enable at all times, whenever you turn the bike on, the lights come on, that's a European requirement. Um, Fenders, I don't think, you have to pay a little bit extra for the fenders if you got the Rad Rover in the United States, right? Yeah, yeah, so we spec the standards, uh, fenders as standard in Europe, as okay. well as the rear rack and then the license plate holder, which is all integrated. Oh, and the license plate, yeah, I, I wanna show that. So the light is slightly different on the rear end of this bike. If you're watching from America and you're like, I have a Rad Rover, like what's the difference? The rear light is slightly different. It's got those uh, motor inhibiting brake levers that also activate the rear light, which is really nice. That's that's a great safety option if you're heading around early morning or evening. License plate mount right here. And that's something that I'm really not very used to in the United States. In the US, I've seen we have like class one, which is pedal assist only up to 20 miles per hour. Class two, which has throttle. This is sort of a hybrid of those classes. And I was gonna ask Mike about that because it sounds like there's this new L1EA classification. What's the deal with that? Yeah, so that stands for light powered cycle. And mm -hmm. so what the Rad Rhino is, is basically a blend between a regular electric bike and a moped or, or motor scooter. I see. And so you license it like a moped or motor scooter. The license can usually come to your doorstep in one or two days in most countries. It's pretty easy. It is, yeah. So How old do you have to be? Um, the average age varies per country. So oh. it's between 15, 18, 20 something. You, know, you have somewhere to wear a in helmet? Range. Um, uh, in some locations you do and some you don't. So we sell in 28 European countries currently, wow. so you can imagine there's some variation in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, so it's it's good to know. And for me, it's a little bit of a learning experience. Like I've reviewed this bike. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a standout in the US market because it's affordable and so versatile. So people who want to go off-road in a little bit, they got these big fat tires. So it's 26 by four inches wide. But Rad Power Bikes has actually partnered up with Kenda on their Druggernaut, so it has puncture resistant lining as well as the reflective stripes. And for me, that's that's huge. I mean, yeah, you could go off road, but I think a lot of times I'm riding around the city or whatever, and I want to be seen. So the combination of lights and some reflective 
uh, detailing on the bikes is really great. Mike, does this just come in like the kind of the satin black or the matte black? So there's satin black and um, white and orange, just like the US oh. models. So very you know, cool. Variation. So you got a couple color choices. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we talked a little bit about fit. We talked about the visibility, maybe some of the approachability, all these different options like uh, head to mounted front rack. And that's an option, but you'll notice that if you turn the bike, the, the rack would say straight. And so you're not gonna dump your, your cargo while you're riding. And I, I appreciate that. That's definitely the way to do it. And look at how heavy duty this is with four bolts. The light in that case would mount to the front of that rack and it, it wouldn't turn like it does right now as you steer. Uh, but it's nice that they, they thought about that, that the light's not gonna be colliding with the base of the rack or something like that. If we come back to this rear rack, I love how it matches so well. I mean, all the, the tubing and everything is very, it's, it's just beefier, you know? And it's got an extra secure point right here for that plastic fender, so you're not gonna get a lot of rattling and stuff. And they're, they're extra wide too, so you're not gonna get dirty, get wet. If we come down here to the chain ring on the front, we've got two alloy plates, so it acts as a guide. It's gonna keep the chain from dropping off. 12 magnet cadence sensor, extra large Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals with those nubs. And that's gonna keep you from slipping off if it is wet or maybe a little bit muddy. They also include this derailleur guard, and that helps to protect the power cable for the rear hub motor, as well as the derailleur. This is Shimano Acera, so it's several steps up in their line. And then the freewheel, this is a DNP 11 tooth to 34 tooth, so an extra large uh, climbing gear, basically. That's something I really appreciate, and it's nickel coated, so it's designed to be a little bit more durable. The freewheel's very nicely. It's, it's definitely one of the better uh, components that they've upgraded in recent years because they used to use stuff that just wasn't as wide as like 14 to 28 tooth and just didn't give you as many options for some of those climbing situations. And then the motor. So this is 750 watt uh, nominal. I guess it's continuously rated at 750. And, and for me, that's it's neat to see because in Europe, they limit a lot of e-bikes at 250 watts. But this one being the L1 EA, I kind of kind of get away with that. And so you got a little bit more power for climbing and that's nice if you've got a heavier bike like this. So it's fat bike specific. You'll notice these thicker 12 gauge black spokes, the front and rear, good setup all around, especially with the throttle, getting this thing started. It zips right up to speed, produces a little bit more noise than the gearless direct drive motor that we've got on the European Rad Wagon, but otherwise a great choice for kind of trail riding and stuff. We come up to the cockpit. I was talking about how it's fairly adjustable and ergonomic, but the throttle can be disabled. So a minute ago, I was talking about getting that zippy feel. You can turn that off if you want to. And with the cadence sensor down here, it's fairly responsive, but it ramps up a little bit more smoothly if you're in the lower levels of assist, which we'll explore in just a minute. Okay, so before we get there, the battery pack, this is rated at 48 volts, 14 amp hours for a total capacity of 672 watt hours. That's that's awesome. That's a lot of juice to get you going and take you a little bit further. Maybe you load this thing up with some cargo. And I love that it's it's compatible with the, the Rad Wagon, right? So you could use the battery on both of the bikes and maybe you could take two packs and go for an extra long adventure, go trekking or something like that. It's, it's exciting to me. It uses Samsung cells, 18650 size, 35E, which is, it's like a higher rating. It's higher energy density, weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. So you could take that off if you need to lift the bike or transport it. And in the front, we do have a suspension fork with lockout, preload adjust, and quick release. And that's nice. You could take that off too if you really need to maybe carry this down into a basement or something just to try to reduce that weight as much as possible. The warranty on this, I think it's two year comprehensive, right, Mike? Yeah, so that covers everything except for basic wear components, tires, brake pads, chain. Okay. Um, but those, especially on an e-bike, you know, tires will wear out a little bit faster just because you're riding a lot of mileage, which is, which is great. So we make those available right on our website. Fantastic. The mechanical disc brakes. So you do use a little bit more hand effort than if these were hydraulic, but they're more easy to adjust for a lot of people with just standard tools down here. So that's part of the reason they did that and cost savings, trying to keep this down at uh, the $18.99 price point. 180 millimeter disc brake rotors, and they did upgrade these in recent years, so they're a little bit thicker, and they might not uh, warp or create as much noise because of that. They've got a, an extra strengthening torque arm right there just to spread the weight into this aluminum alloy frame. Tektro Aries calipers, and then they've got this conical washer that they've upgraded, so it's a little bit easier to adjust these. Kickstand with adjustable length, stays clear of that crank arm, 
so you're not going to collide really appreciate that and then they've externalized the controller for the bike so the batteries are fairly affordable it's a little bit easier to get a replacement by separating it and, and it's a higher amp controller which is kind of cool so we're back up here we're getting ready to go for a ride. The display is not removable, but it can be swiveled to reduce glare. And they've got this really cool USB type A charging port built into the bottom, which puts out an amp versus 500 milliamps. So that's nice. It's gonna be able to charge like a mobile phone or an extra light or something. And not every company gives you that. And when you've got a higher capacity battery pack, it's, it's nice that they positioned it up high, very easy to reach. So you're not getting wires all across the bike. And you might've noticed that most of the wires are internally routed. And maybe that's something you're used to in Europe where you've had e-bikes. They've really proliferated there and they're higher quality and stuff. But in the United States, some of the cheaper bikes, the more affordable ones, they've, they've kind of had stuff tacked on and it's really not as purpose built. So when you look at this frame, even the way that it's reinforced, kind of extra strength stepped in so that the battery is sunk down a little bit to keep that weight low and center. I really, I mean, you start to notice that stuff and appreciate it. Even things like this, they've got this seat post clamp that's longer, so it's easier to adjust. And right now I have cold hands, right? And that can be a, a little bit frustrating and kind of painful. So that's a very small thing, but it's nice that they went ahead and did that. So back up to the display panel, when we're ready to turn it on, you hold the mode button. It starts up in pedal assist level one right there, but you can take it all the way down to zero and just use this thing like a little scooter if you want to goes up to five and that's going to be the zippiest but it's also going to use the most battery uh, energy it's fastest so up here at the top left we've got a battery infographic with five bars each bar represents like 20 percent step and that's an area that i feel like they can improve in the future maybe they could have 10 steps or a percentage readout you know when you're down to just one bar you don't want to get home like limping home right and having to pedal this heavier bike so that's something I keep an eye on. There's no range readout or anything. It's not quite that fancy. We do have an odometer here, and if you press the mode button, it changes to trip meter. Speed in the middle, it's in kilometers per hour, but you could change to miles per hour if you wanted to by holding up and down. And then we've got watt readout along the bottom. So as you're, you're really juicing it, you can see how much energy you're using. And I think that's pretty much it. I, I do want to compliment the bell though. That's one of my favorite features on these bikes. And also you'll notice that there's like this threaded, and uh, more water resistant connecting point right here, which looks for the display. Mike, is there anything else you wanna say about this bike before we go out and do a little ride? Yeah, you, you captured most of it. I think that it'd be nice for folks to see kind of the VIN plate on the left side of the bike. Oh, the VIN plate, so that's right. This is the mounting location where from when you get one of these bikes from the factory in Europe, it'll have a plate on there similar to when you buy a, a car or a motorcycle. So that describes you know, the location of manufacture, the specifications, and, and you use that during the registration process. Sweet, sweet. So. Yeah, so you guys have checked all the boxes. It's neat to see a company going from the US over to Europe because we've received so many awesome e-bikes here and a lot of technological advancement has happened because of those bikes i think um, but you guys have done a lot in the way of maybe like the following this unique legislation and giving people some more options yeah yeah the big thing for us was kind of by blending our u.s kind of pioneering spirit with the european market so we've hired a really great uh, team in the in the europe uh, uh, headquarters there so they kind of make sure that we're both building bikes that are exciting for american and european customers but that we kind of tailor things tailor the message and tailor the experience to really delight customers in europe cool cool one more thing didn't want to forget about this this is what the charger looks like it's a two amp charger, fairly lightweight, 1.1 pounds and fits easily into one of those extra bags if you get it. I have seen some other companies like Bosch where they have a four amp charger, it's a little bit faster, but you know, you have a high capacity pack, they need to save money somewhere and the faster you charge the batteries, usually it creates a little bit of wear on those batteries prematurely. Same thing with storing the battery. You wanna put it in a cool, dry location, try not to drop it, all that kind of standard stuff with a lithium ion battery. Okay guys, you're in Mike's trustworthy hands. He's gonna film, we're gonna go up this hill here and just cruise around the city. Don't even have to pedal. Gotta love that. <laughs> okay guys, from here you can see the 42 tooth chain ring with that nice alloy guide so it won't bounce off. We got a neoprene slap guard to protect the nice looking paint here. We got the derailleur guard in the back that protects the cable, the derailleur. It's just a good setup. The drivetrain's pretty solid. And 11 to 34 teeth. So that wider spread, a lot of times I'm used to seeing 11 to 32, or again, the cheaper like 14 to 28. So this is a, this is a great drivetrain. Again, DNP, 
uh, eco-friendly nickel plating, nickel coating on that free wheel back there. I'm gonna pedal along in the highest level of assist so the motor will be the most pronounced. You can hear it, get an idea for how quickly it responds. noticed some noise in the background there it's because there's a train coming our way and I just thought it would be fun to show you a little view <laughs> pretty cool we're in Seattle Washington right now if you ever get a chance to visit it's really beautiful they got some cool sculpture parks and waterfront views and stuff that's where we were earlier when we were filming sweet so it's getting a little bit darker right now and I just wanted to show you what that display panel looked like and also how stable this thing is with the wider tires. It's kind of a fun, like, go-anywhere machine. They've been really popular in the United States for that reason. Also a little bit more comfortable. Got that nice suspension fork up front with 32 millimeter stanchions. So they're a little bit thicker. It's, um, it's definitely added. Do you guys do those custom, Mike? Like, the custom? suspension fork? Oh, uh, yes, that's, a, that's an RST fork for uh, Rad Rover specifically. That's awesome. So just like the tires, they do a custom thing with RST with that lockout with the preload and stuff. And if you lower the tire pressure, you can actually use this thing on sand or snow, like loamy terrain, and it floats pretty well. So whether it's comfort or off-road, these tires do a pretty good job. And I've actually tested them in snow and sand in Cabo, Mexico. You can check out that video. It's a long time ago, but they worked pretty well. They actually went through soft, dry sand when we took it all the way down to five PSI. Well guys, I think that's about it. I've had a lot of fun cruising around the city on this thing. I hope this gives you as many details as, as possible. I know these, these videos tend to run a little bit long, but I've got even more specs back at the website, the measurements for length, width, height, weight, and you can compare this back to back with the Rad Rover. There's a little compare tool, share your stories in the forum, maybe some pictures since this has been available in Europe for a while. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again in the future, maybe in Europe. That would be really cool. Have fun out there and ride safe.